Uh, the reason for the zip code today is going to be so that the information uh, sources that are being handed to you could be more tailored towards um, your specific needs. And that's also why we would like to know um, a little bit about what kind of work it is that you're doing. Um, so if you don't mind, you can either unmute and go ahead and share um, and then or you can pop something in the chat. So my name is Priscilla. I'm with the University of Arizona. Um, and I work in Tucson, so my zip code is 85712. And like I mentioned, we're just going to take a minute or two more to see if anybody else will trickle in and we'll get started right away. Um, my name is Stacy Williams. I work at the Pima County Health Department. I'm in the Vaccine Equity Program, and um, I'm in Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stacey. I also see that we have Matt with Pima at 857. Um, Aricia, Terry. Some more in the chat for those of you who can't um, don't have access to it. So we have Haley. She's a program coordinator in vaccine equity here in Pima. Jackie Soto also in Pima. We have uh, Brianne with Pima Health Department. We have um, Leslie also with Pima. We have Rosa with Graham County today. Um, Des Hartung also from Pima. Leah Morales. Um, with Pima. We're going to start calling these the Pima um, Lunch and Learns. <laughs> I love you all so much. Thank you for being here. Um, let's see here. So we have um, Candy Pipes with Special Staff Assistant PHEP. Um, we have Sharon also with Pima. And <laughs> All righty. Um, so it looks like it's about 1206. 12 so we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, so we do have with us a Jean McClell McClellan today to talk to us about some of the information resources and share her vast knowledge as to how we can use that information and apply it to our everyday work. Um, I will be monitoring the chat. Um, if anybody needs anything, feel free to send, to send a message and I'll keep an eye on it. And I'll also be uh, posting some links so that you can follow along with some of the work that we'll be discussing today. Again, if you have any questions or you need anything, don't hesitate. Um, this is um, a very informal setting. We just wanna all be friends and share the knowledge that we all have. So thank you all so much. And I'll hand it over to Jean. Uh oh, I need to share screen. <laughs> there we go. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Jean McClelland. I think I've met, 
I hate the share screen because then I can't see people. <laughs> oh, well, but uh, I see a lot of familiar names um, as you were all popping in. And um, I've been working in public health, rural health for since the last century. Um, and uh, very recently now, maybe five years now, have been working at the embedded public health liaison librarian at the College of Public Health. And I have an interim project right now where I'm working with the network of the National Library of Medicine. Um, and really just uh, for my, I'm feeling like I'm being very greedy about this because I'm trying to engage more of the public health workforce in all of the amazing trainings and information resources that are available to us um, for free through the national, the network of the National Library of Medicine. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just walk you through the page a little bit and um, show you some of the highlights. And um, I, I also have a goal of trying to um, get myself a community health, consumer health information specialization. Um, and I wondered if anybody wants to join that path with me. So that's another ulterior motive I have. Um, so I'll show you some of those things. They can be useful to you as a, as a credential, or it's not really a credential, but as a specialization. And in fact, I wonder um, if anybody already has a CHIS on this call. Um, if you do, pop in the chat and let me know that you do. Um, of course, acronym city, alphabet city, uh, one thing <laughs> that this is consumer health information specialization. There's also something called a CHESS, which a lot of folks in the public health workforce do have, and which if you study through the university and maybe or go through a certificate program at public health, the College of Public Health, you can actually probably sit for your CHESS or your MCHESS, which is a master's level. So that's community health education specialist. So um, NNLM courses also do have some things that can um, qualify for chess and also um, continuing nursing education. So there's a lot on this page. And I think, I don't know if Priscilla is already popped. I should open my chat so I can see what's happening. There we go. So if we pop the NNLM website into the chat, this is what it looks like. The Network of National Library of Medicine is part of the Library of Medicine. Um, it's split into several regions. Um, you can create an account that's your own account. Um, you don't have to be tied to your job or anything. You can just have your own personal account with NNLM. Um, it's um, it's free, just like PubMed is also free um, for as a database to search. So there's these green buttons you'll see around throughout the website where you can they'll remind you you can join or log in or create an account. I'm not going to log in today because that could do some weird thing to my computer. And that's, of course, Murphy's Law. I want to avoid that. So one of the first things you'll see on the site is like along the top, there are ways to you can learn more about us, um, the membership opportunities. Um, and I'm working on this project with NNLM just through April, and then I'll, but I'll continue um, supporting anyone who wants to continue um, engaging with NNLM stuff in Arizona anyway, because it just it it just benefits me as well as you. And I really don't like learning things all by myself. I like to be in a community and a learning community, and I like to help build community. So this is a nice way to do it. And I think we all need our CEs, right? So um, this very zoomy sort of fast uh, rotator, you can see there are all kinds of interesting things that you can do through NNLM. Um, of course, now it stopped zooming around, but um, the citizen science links, uh, misinformation, things you can learn to combat misinformation, etc. cetera. Um, let's see. Um, data work. Um, environmental determinants of health resources, um, digital divide resources. And then if you scroll down even further, you can actually see what classes are coming up that would be like webinars or hour long classes. And many of the classes end up also being um, recorded. So you can actually watch them later. Um, so you can set yourself up. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom there, um, you can little, learn a little bit more about the regions. So Arizona is in, region four. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. So I'm going to, I want to give you guys motion sickness by scrolling around. And is this screen visible enough? Is anyone having trouble seeing the screen? Is it, is it okay? Is it working for you? Um, if you're having it'll, any, 
It looks good, Jean, but could it's you just a, make it the full cream, the full screen? The make it screen? full. Okay, here we go. Thank you very much. Is that all right? And then I can try and make it a little bigger. Hold on. No, yeah, it looks great. Thank you. Is that a little better? And I, I have it on this massive, like I, I used it, I'm using a television for my monitor. <laughs> So it always looks a little bit different. Okay, so um, basically, um, one of the, the links I'm going to really kind of deep dive into. Can you see my cursor? Okay, too. Yes. Um, okay, so I'll I'll show you guys walk through the training bit a little bit, but there's also a really great thing that might be of interest or use to you immediately, which is the guides and resources page. So I'm just going to click onto that really quick. I didn't include that link in the chat. Um, Sorry, so because I thought of it later, I was like, oh, this is very handy. Um, but we have different collections of materials. And there's one here that says resources for healthcare providers um, in a way that might, if, if you're um, not an actual physician or nurse, you may think, oh, this isn't for me, but I really um, encourage you to take a look at it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click on it. Um, because it has, um, you can, you can, order on information materials this way. Um, there's information about clinical trials, like finding research and primary research, um, things that are very physician oriented or nursing oriented, but there is also Medline Plus, which there is a tutorial I'll show you that's coming up. Um, and there is a, a there are patient resources in different languages. Um, and there's also, you know, like Ethnomed, there's some really useful, um, I know we have a diverse population in Pima County, a lot of refugee population, for example. So there are things that can be useful to you in serving um, your populations. Also, it's a way, if they're, you're not finding what you need there, you can, you can actually let them know, hey, you need to have something in Kiswahili or something like that. So, so I recommend um, exploring this page. There's information on um, drug information, genetics resources, um, evidence-based practice, and it goes on and on. And it, this is, um, it's not very, not very many pictures. It's a lot of lists on this website, but I think that's websites anymore. Um, there's a lot of scrolling you might need to do, but there is really good stuff in here. So, okay, close your eyes if you get motion sickness, because I'm really gonna scroll back to the top of the page. All right, here I am at the top of the page. So I'm gonna go into the training page and just show you what's there. Um, so here on this training dropdown, I will talk a little bit about the specializations, which I mentioned a little earlier, um, but there's a link to classes available now. And I did send, I think, a link to that page. Um, that might be the next link I sent you, Priscilla. But available now, courses available now. And I'm just going to jump into that right now and see what, what we have coming up. Um, so I'm clicking on that. It takes a little time. Um, handy light bulb image. And here we go. On the classes page, there are classes that are kind of set in time scheduled. <clears throat> um, some might be a class series and um, at the top, so that they're sort of kind of, you know, Zoom or Moodle or um, web, web classes at the top. In the middle, there are regional events that are coming up or available now. And you can scroll through the regional ones at the bottom of each of these blocks, there's additional pages. So as you can see, like this goes all the way up to six pages. There is a lot, a lot, something for everybody, maybe too much for everybody on this website. Um, and then there's on-demand classes. So those are things you can actually, you know, participate in on your own time. Um, again, as you scroll through, you'll see at the bottom, you can scroll through, there's four pages of those. So, okay, close your eyes, I'm scrolling up again. All right, I'm back. You can open your eyes. Um, I do get motion sickness, so <laughs> when I'm watching people, that's why. Um, so you can filter your classes, um, and they have you know experience level. You can just filter by on demand. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and take. You can do the keyword is a little clunky, but you can try searching with keyword. Um, I was looking for a particular class yesterday that I was showing the local librarians, rural librarians, and of course it didn't work for me. So see, I was looking up trauma-informed um, care. 
um, and it was not, didn't come up. So sometimes what you're looking for may not come up with keywords. So try a few variations or, um, and, and you might, you should be able to find something interesting. Um, the certifications, um, the, the, the filters include the different specializations and certifications pretty much. Um, there is a really amazing one that is sunsetting in April, which is the disaster information specialization. That's what I originally was hoping to um, engage in prior to the pandemic. And I was working with the Pima County Health Department, Julia Flannery and others to, um, to set that up. And then of course, just everything went crazy and now they're sunsetting it. So I'm, it, you can take advantage of these classes through um, April and possibly also get your specialization if you're really gonna heads down, do some classwork. But um, I, don't, I don't know anybody that's not too, <laughs> that isn't busy enough to not be able to do that. That's a really weird sentence, ignore what I just said. But and we're all too busy to try and just do constant classes. Um, I'm going to filter to consumer health information level one, and that would be um, the one, and the, here's a chess, it's certified health education specialist, but I'm going to filter to the consumer health on demand classes, and I'm going to apply that. So, and then it'll roll around a little bit, and this, this, the classes that are available on demand for the CHIS um, are, there's a CHIS on demand, which looks like this. So they'll tell you what the learning objectives are, what the platform is, um, what experience level. And on every class page, you, if you want to register, you do have to create an NNLM account. And it also just gives you a handy button to do that right at that spot. So you can be exploring and finally say, hey, I want to do this. And you won't have to go dig around on the website for where to, where to set up an account. So um, uh, this one, it also, this one I think is geared towards a library, but a really important thing I want you to know is that just because it's a library offered, um, you know, it's NNLM, Libraries of Medicine, it's not really just for librarians, this information. A lot of this stuff is really, really consumer useful or um, practitioner useful. So um, do not feel, it, don't feel that it's just for librarians. That's probably like my main take a home message, take home message for today. Um, Another class that I, sorry, I'm going back to the available classes page. Um, I did the filter to on demand. And if I'm going too fast, Priscilla, let me know. Sometimes I think, let's see, maybe the most I read. Let me go on to the, well, and I plus tutorial. Just on demand. I apologize. I'm going down, close your eyes, scrolling down again to the on demand. And um, there is one that I'm wanting to start out with, and I'm starting also with the rural librarians, is a Medline Plus tutorial for librarians and health educators. So this is one that um, that I would encourage. Um, Medline Plus is a, is a resource put out by the uh, Li National Library of Medicine. Um, it is consumer oriented. It is really, really uh, a rich and robust platform for learning, for, for sharing and learning and finding out um, the kinds of things maybe that people you're working with as clients in, in Pima County might be needing. And I apologize if there are people not from Pima County in your own counties too, it's online. Um, I'm clicking right now onto the page for that class. So it's um, something that you can uh, register for and take on your own time. It's an hour, you can get one hour of credits. Um, and it really explores, you know, there's there's a lot of information about drugs, herbs, supplements, um, and just the basics of how to navigate Medline Plus. It'll link out to other really good resources. So you'll learn those. And it really is geared towards those um, wanting to provide really reliable health information for consum consumers and patients. So that is the Medline Plus tutorial. Um, I think just the next thing I wanna talk about 
Are there any questions so far? None in the chat. None in the chat. OK, um, let's see. So those are two of the classes. There are a lot of different. There's one that's going on that went on today. Um, it was effective um, health, health communication and health literacy. Um, and that was today as a live class just before this class. Um, I went ahead and registered because it's also nice if you can't join us live, they actually give you, they do um, offer you the opportunity to get the recording after the event, you just have to register for it. So I just wanted to let you know that this is another way that we're trying to make things easier, more accessible and um, not sort of time trap, you know, trapping you into a time where you have to be able to access a computer and not be distracted. Um, like at 1 p.m. on, well, it was today at 11 o'clock on the 26th. Um, so there you go, that, that, cl that class was just now. Um, so as far as the health specialization, the specialization page goes, I'm going back to the NLLM page. Pardon me, close your eyes. I'm... All right. So off this training link again on the on the main page, there's the information about getting a specialization. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And here on this page, it's it's got sort of the basic information about the different specializations that you can um, earn by taking some of the courses. Um, for the CHIS, it's uh, if you have 12 hours of um, of coursework that that maps to the specialization, you can apply and get your specialization. And it normally is something I'm clicking on it now, and it's everything's a little slow. Um, This page will tell you a little bit more about what it is. It's something that is offered through the Medical Library Association. Yet another thing that makes you think, oh, it's just for librarians, but in fact, it is not. And um, the to get your specialization, there's a fee involved, but the National Networks of Library Medicine will um, sponsor um, your application. And it's actually gone up from 75 very soon. It's going up to, I heard 134, which is a really weird number, but that's, it, it is going up. But um, on this page for the application fee, it tells you about it. And you, there's a sponsorship form so that you can, you can, you know, maybe you've already taken some of these courses, you can actually already apply them. Um, you, and then if you just click on this form, you'll see there's a, a Google form to fill out. So just, you know, you'd give your basic information. And then if you're not a librarian, just put other and what you do. Um, and then um, if you're looking for the level one or level two, or you're renewing, because um, you could, um, it's good for three years, and then you can renew by doing a certain number of credit hours, um, kind of like any certification or specialization. Um, I really always love this, uh, have you completed? Yes, no, I don't know. <laughs> um, so the other thing I'm gonna, the, the end in the limp page I think is really very user-friendly as far as navigating um, this sort of this specialization and these other specializations. I'm going back to, I'm going back one page, apologize. Um, but on the MLA page, there is also a, a more complete description. And did I include that, Priscilla, the MLA um, net.org page, a couple of those for links? Yes. I have so you can MLA. read more. It's incredibly verbose, but it is a lot of information, but it's useful. It does talk about what the um, requirements and what the competencies are. Um, so that is something for those who like to explore more deeply, but when you're getting to the point where you're wanting to um, actually uh, submit for specialization, I'd say go through the NNLM page because it's a little bit more user friendly for, uh, and then it's, that's the avenue also for getting subsidized for the specialization. There's also this brochure that's handy, um, which kind of overviews it as well. And I think that I included that link also. So you can just learn a little bit about it. And what it really um, 
it, it's for medical librarians, public librarians, but um, if you are an allied health professional or an inf some kind of information, and all of us in a way are information professionals these days, because we are having to explain a lot of things and we want to be able to um, feel really grounded in what we're explaining. So, I mean, what the last bullet here is it's also for anyone who cares about providing accurate and useful health information to the public. So I figure that could be pretty much everyone in the room. Um, okay. So now let's see. I think that was really the main thing that I wanted to um, talk about. I will show you a little bit more about the region four, the NNLM region four. And then at the end, I just wanna in encourage folks, if you're interested in joining the co-learning community, going for a chess uh, with me, um, you can email me and we can, we can get rolling on that. Um, if we did that, I would wanna, you know, start out with the Medline Plus tutorial, but that you don't have to be tied to that. You can choose anything else. And I'd like us to come together, um, you know, nothing really hard and fast, like maybe in early to mid-March to just sort of get together and debrief on what learning we've managed to do, what kind of things maybe have made it hard for us to access the learning, just things that'll help us to know what your context is for learning um, and training in the work you're doing and how the NNLM can also um, be more clear um, if there are things we need to demystify because some things just get so jargony that you kind of can't, uh, you know, if you're not in that linguistic world of librarians, you may not really, you might feel excluded and we don't want that. So um, I, let's see. I see there's a question about, so Sharon and Chris, so Sharon, you got the, the links already in the chats, right? They're okay. Um, and then Chris Montgomery, anything specifically for educators? When you say educators, what do you mean? Like health educators or professors or? Oh, okay. All right. And I swear this this page is just so loaded. There's just so much. Um, but I think another thing that might be useful to you, um, I'm clicking on the regional page. So region four is a pretty new region. You know, the federal regions, there's like for the different federal agencies, there's always like a different set of regions, um, like Western Re there's region nine, et cetera, for diff depending what, like health and human services has their own set of regions. Well, National Library of Medicine's regions are um, divided into um, six regions, I believe, and we are in region four, but we used to be in a different region. So now we're three years into being region four and region four includes Arizona. And by we, I mean Arizona, because um, I'm just focusing on Arizona in this particular job with NNLM. It includes Idaho, Colorado, Montana, New Mexico, North Dakota, South Dakota, Utah, and Wyoming. So um, it's an interesting um, mix of states. We have a lot of things in common, um, you know, like large, vast rural expanses, and um, a lot of tribal nations are within these states. Um, you know, Montana is a border state, Idaho is a border state, we're a border state, New Mexico is a border state, all kinds of things in common. So um, if you want to learn more about becoming, about classes and trainings, they have a link off of there, but there's also a really handy um, and wonderful um, newsletter that you can get onto and it'll tell you about upcoming um, opportunities and trainings. There was a very good one just a couple of weeks ago. I have the link to, um, I think it's, the recording is available off their YouTube channel, but it was on um, providing services for the deaf. Um, and it was really, really uh, a powerful presentation. So that was just a week ago. So it's really fresh in my mind. Um, and I think there are also just contact information for different aspects um, for like, if you want, there are continuing and professional development 
funding awards. They may be geared a little bit more towards uh, information scientists, but there's a lot of collaborative work between um, libraries, librarians, and um, public health departments throughout Arizona. And of course, one wonderful thing, an example is, you know, um, um, Jen Barry was, you know, a Pima County Public Librarian and in, in when the pandemic started, she moved over to be based in the Pima County Health Department. And she and I worked a lot during the pandemic on helping um, get information out as quickly as we could. Um, and and um, we, so anyway, there's a long history. There's also, a, I'm a fan of one of the librarians that's on the call right now. Um, you may know, you may know who you are. And um, so librarians, and non-librarians, we're all in the getting um, reliable information out to the people who need it in a timely way. And I don't wanna be a bottleneck for that kind of information. I wanna be a conduit. And I think at that point, I'm gonna just stop because I'm getting to the point where I'm going blah, 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 blah. <laughs> ah. Anyway, yay. Well, Terry, you're one of the ones that made me wanna be a librarian. So thank you very much. <laughs> I think I'll stop sharing now and see what kind of Q&A there might be. We'll stop sharing. Where is that button? There it is. So the other thing is the buttons go to different places when you're sharing. I think I covered everything. I'll put my email also into the chat just so in case you do want to join in on a community of learning um, endeavor. You can let Priscilla know and she'll connect you with me, but also um, just you can email me directly anything in an LM or anything public health librarian type stuff. Um, I'm happy to, if I don't know it, I know who might or does and um, or, or I might know it and I'll, I'm all about connecting people with information that they need. So that's me. <sighs> Thank you for listening. Thank you, Plumber, for not coming in to fix the hot water heater right in the middle of my talk. Um, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> uh, so I have a, I have gone ahead and sent a file via the chat for you all that want to keep any of those links that we discussed today. Um, so it's in there. There's also Jean's emails also associated to that. Um, and yes, Terry, thanks so much for bringing up the designated campus colleague. Um, we have, um, especially for Terry, I believe you're here in Pima County, correct? Um, especially for those of you that are working with Matt Kopech, those emails have been sent out uh, for the designated campus colleagues and we, you would be able to have access to some of these databases as well as uh, also access to us to guide you and help you in any of your research needs. So I know I've constantly reach out to Jean and she's amazing and knows exactly where to get um, the information, get the latest information and assist you in any of that. Um, so at this moment, we would like to open it up for any questions that anybody may have or any comments. So one, one thing about designated campus colleague, AKA DCC is what we kind of refer to it on campus. Um, I am happy to, um, you know, do a special meeting with folks who are DCCs about the different library resources. And I can do one-on-one -on -one or at a time convenient for you. So just, I'm available for that kind of support as well. Um, just let me know. Just thanks for bringing that up, Terry. Alrighty, if we don't have any questions, we'll return to you 15 minutes of your lunch break. <laughs> we thank you so much for being here and keep an eye out on your inbox. We'll be having more of these information sessions. For those of you that are DCC or are waiting for DCC status, um, Matt and I are, sorry again, Pima County, <laughs> Uh, Matt and I at Pima County, and this is open to all the health departments, of course, but Matt and I are in Pima County are going to be, are working on getting that out for you, and we are going to be putting together um, a DCC information session for you all, so you have access to that. And again, I am Priscilla Ruedas, I am your contact here, I can be one of your, con one of your very contacts here at the University of Arizona's College of Public Health.
Um, and if you need anything, do not hesitate to reach out. And we are just here to be of service to you so that we can get the most resources out to our communities. And together we can make a better community out there. But uh, thank you all very much for your time. Um, put N N L M and County Health Department. And I can stay on if people have questions or anything. And also, yeah, if you're going to email me, just put something in this subject that'll pop out for me. So N N L M should pretty much pop out for me as a, I'm always like, I guess we all get so many emails. <laughs> but thank you all. Thank you all. So good. I hang in there. Stay healthy. Enjoy the cold weather. <laughs> and I look forward to meeting you in 3D at some point. <laughs> Alrighty, y'all have a great day. Thank you.